Well, as detailed there, George never admitted the full scale of her offences, leaving many parents unsure whether their children were amongst her victims. And one of those parents, whose identity we've concealed, we're going to call Kate, joins us now. Uh, also joining us via Skype is criminal barrister Yasin Patel. Welcome to both of you. Um, Kate, thank you for coming in today, um, especially under these appalling circumstances. You sent two of your children to Little Ted's. Uh, you would believe that only one of them was targeted, but how would you describe her? She was really bubbly, friendly. She was the person to go to for gossip. You know, she was just a really nice person to be around. And so, as time has gone on and as you the sort of the understanding of what she did became clearer. You've been trying to rack your brain for any signals or any signs that she was poss uh, po she could carry out something like this. Yeah, you try, you go through conversations you've had and things she did and everything she said, you do it meticulously. Did I miss something? You know, it, it always comes back to me and it, is it my fault kind of thing, so. I don't think it's any, no. any of your faults, that's oh. for sure. Um, what do you know of her life, the sort of person that she was? What did she tell you about herself? Um, she was a local mum. She lived in the village. She was well-known, well-liked. She had a husband. Um, she started sharing with a few of us mums that she'd met someone online and she wanted to go meet him, start an affair, etc. And being a kind of friend, I thought to myself at the time, She's obviously unhappy, so, you know, that's fine, go for it. And little did I know it came to light that this guy was also involved in the paedophile ring. So, this day then, this is June 2009, and you say this is the day that everything changed, and you, you went to go to the nursery, and there was, a, there was a police officer there, and there was a meeting then for the parents to... for them to explain what had happened. What were you told at that point? Um, we didn't know anything. We turned up to the school gates in the morning. There was a police officer, like you said, there. Um, we weren't given any details, we were just told that there was a meeting for parents up at the church hall. So we went to this meeting and just the sheer horror. Um, they had to go into detail about what was found in the pictures. You know, they wanted to be completely transparent with us. Um, so we knew. Um, it was just a really, really difficult meeting to have. Um, some of the children could be identified because of birthmarks and things like that, but some children couldn't be identified. No. Um, and you had no idea whether your son had been a target? No, none at all. And for most of us, to this day, we still haven't been given a definitive answer, which is why it's so hard. Um, we can only go on what we think. And the problem is, because you're a mum and you're... You, as you just said, you keep blaming yourself, which, of course, is... is you yeah. just can't do that because this is no way in your fault. How could you tell? You trust these people. We all do as parents. Yeah. And yet there's something you keep remembering about when you dropped your son off and he had quite an extreme reaction to, to going through the gates. Yeah, he used to scream at the gate. Um, and I mean scream the place down. And other mums would laugh and say, oh, don't worry, just walk away. You know, as you do as a mum, you know. And it's probably to this day I've never forgiven myself for, for walking away. So. Do you feel that she took his childhood? What effect has it had on him? Yeah, I feel that she has completely destroyed his childhood. He's never had a sleepover at a friend's house. Um, he still has nightmares, he still wets the bed. And he's 13 now? Yeah, yeah, he's had counselling, he's seen psychologists. Um, he doesn't remember anything, but they say his subconscious, it will be in there, but it will manifest in different ways of, you know, it won't be a physical memory. And of course he's 13 now, and you haven't... I mean, have you... you haven't explained to him yet, you haven't told him, is that a conversation that is yet to come? I mean, how do you even bring up something like that? For me personally, I don't think it's something I will bring up, mainly for a selfish reason, because I couldn't sit down and have a conversation with my child about that. And also because I don't want to give him any false memories. I don't want to make him think that there's something wrong with him. Well, as um, Holly said in the, in the video before, before we started, she was jailed indefinitely in 2009, ordered to serve a minimum of seven years. 
um, and she has recently been given parole. She's going to be subjected to strict licence conditions and an unusually large exclusion zone. We'll talk about um, that in a moment with, um, with Yassine. But um, for you, how do you feel that she was allowed her freedom by the parole board without actually giving the names of the children who she abused? I think it's absolutely disgusting that she's had 10 years in prison and we've basically, we've got a lifetime of torture still ahead of us now. And you took things into your own hand. The only way for you to get through to her was to write this open letter. Yeah. Um, it took you a very long time. I mean, you started writing this back 10 years ago, so Ten this years. has taken you a very long time. Mm -hmm. Your hopes of writing that letter, are you expecting to have any sort of response from her? I'm not expecting it, but I've said to so many people, if she would meet me and sit in a room with me, I would love to have a conversation, a proper grown-up conversation. And you could do that? Yeah. Well, your letter says, you were my friend. I honestly cannot believe you would hurt our children the way you did. I feel disgusted and ashamed every day that I left my beautiful, innocent children with you willingly as you smiled at me, knowing what you were doing. What you left me with is a legacy of pain and constant reminders of the past. A 13-year-old child that still wets the bed has never had a sleepover at a friend's house. A mother whose heart is absolutely shattered into pieces every time she sees your face or hears your name. Because it reminds me that I gave my children to you without a thought at the school gate every day. You owe every single family a definitive answer. You owe us a list of names. You owe us parents a decade without regrets, shame and guilt. You owe our children their childhood, their innocence and their lives back. Very, very powerful words and we've praised that. Yasin, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, why is she out? She served 10 years of an indeterminate sentence. Um, seven years was a minimum that was ordered by the court. When one looks at the sentence she served, in effect, it's equivalent of a 20-year sentence if it was to be given by a judge. But the most important thing here is the fact that the parole board decided she no longer poses a significant risk to the public. She's undergone, no doubt, many courses, many tests, many things inside prison establishment. And for 10 years, she would have been monitored. And they've decided that now is the time that she should be reintegrated within society under very strict conditions, and that she should be released from a very long sentence. She's kept, she's kept those, the names of those children from the parents, the, the children that she abused. I mean, it appears to be almost a... It could be a, a, a power thing, that she holds that power over everyone that she won't tell. Surely it, would, it was the parole board's responsibility to say, we'll let you out if you give us the names of the children you abused. It's madness. Ultimately, she accepted her guilt in terms of the charges that were brought against her. And she gave all the details that were required for which the judge decided to sentence her. The nursery has a list of all the victims. The nursery has a list of every child that attended. Every single person, every parent, even the victims, in effect, although you're very young then, a lot older now, do have the opportunity to go to local social services, and other agencies, if they require the support. It's never been a requirement either of her incarceration of her re or of her release that she provide the names of all of the victims. And secondly, who knows? She may not even know the names of all of the victims. Oh, she was a teacher at a school. I, I mean, I think so. most teachers at the school know the names of the victims. <laughs> and, and if you're not prepared to give the names, then surely you're not totally rehabilitated to go back into society? Um, it, one's got to look at how rehabilitation works, and it's not just a requirement that you give all the names. It's been said by a very uh, deep review, not just by the parole board, but also Plymouth did a very deep review in terms of the nursery itself. And in terms of Miss George, it's been said that her behaviour throughout her incarceration has been very good. She'd have been interviewed on many occasions. She'd have had to not only provide the parole board, but also other experts who did have testimonies from her and who did interview her. Who've what got many what restrictions will be placed upon her now, where she is? 
uh, very stringent conditions. So there will be not just conditions that the parole board has given, but also she'll be on for the rest of her life in a sex offenders register. Uh, there'll be the obvious ones, for example, where she's under a curfew at the moment. She won't be allowed any near any institutions where it's young children. There won't be any institutions like, for example, swimming baths or public parks, etc. She won't be allowed into any area where there'll be a young child unless there's uh, a third party there. Um, there'll be even more other stringent the police, conditions. In the police the have the resources to, 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 to check all of this, to figure out exactly where she is at any one time. She's under a duty to do so, and being under curfew, I don't know whether she's under a tag or not, but... Mm. No, we've lost I that. I think we might have to leave but that we got, there. I, mean, I think we, we definitely got the, the gist Thank of the, the, the restrictions that she's, uh, that she's under. How do you feel, finally, about that? I've, I feel absolutely disgusted. I mean, if, if our criminal justice system's in a position where they can fix paedophiles in 10 years, then... You know, that's crazy. Once a paedophile, always a paedophile, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't believe she should be around children. Um, there's children everywhere. How can you police that? Oh, well, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you for being very brave and speaking about this this morning. Loved your family. Thank you.